costs of post-secondary education with the news that uh, costs continue to go up, have gone up exponentially and will continue to, and how students can afford post-secondary education. Yeah, the projections over the next four years are looking what at an annual increase on average of about 13%. It's serious. We want to help you plan. That's why we called up Gail Vazoxlade, a financial expert and author of the brand new book, Saving for School. She's on the phone right now. Good morning, Gail. Good morning. This idea of planning, RESPs, we hear about it. Uh, it's a serious decision for families. What is the starting point for questions to ask here? Well, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you are buying the right kind of RESP because there are three kinds. There is a group RESP, there's an individual, and there's a family plan. You don't want the group plan. It's sometimes they're called scholarship trusts. The government did a survey some time ago that showed that the fees associated and the terms associated with group plans are far higher or less flexible. So just, you know, run in the other direction. Go to your local financial institution, open up an individual RESP or if you have more than one kid, a family plan. Okay, I'm so relieved you said this because I'm, I'm not so savvy on the RESP, but I'm one of those parents that's like, okay, I need to get this. As soon as my son was born six years ago, I went to my local financial institution, got one, and I have no idea how it works. Can you help me out with that? Sure. What happens is you put money in. Yeah. And for every dollar you put in up to an annual limit, the government will give you 20 cents in the Canada Education Savings Grant. And so this is the part that makes me scratch my head, okay? The government wants to give you free money and you don't want to take it. Why? Why would you pass up on the free money? So, you know, you put $1,200 in to an RESP. That's just $100 uh, a month. Surely you can find $100 a month. Right? That's the government what I do. will give you $240 back. Where else can you get a 20% return guaranteed? That, there you go. Okay, so Gail, let's talk about uh, how much. What are limits for the RSP uh, in terms of contributions? And then what are the requirements for frequency of these contributions that families are signing up? Okay, so this is the thing about individual versus group plans, okay? The group plans have requirements for frequency, but the individual don't. You can put money in whenever you have it. It's good to set it up on a monthly basis and have that auto-deducted so that you know the savings are building. But if you run into tough times, you don't have to worry about having to forego the plan because you can't make your payments. You can stop the payments for as long as it takes to get yourself back on your feet. Yeah. Uh, there are limits in terms of how much you can put in. There's a lifetime limit of $52,000 that can go in, but you would not put a huge amount in at once because you want to make sure you're taking advantage of those grants. And so the most you should put in in any year is $2,500 unless you have a year that you didn't contribute, in which case you can catch up one year. Okay, now a question for those who didn't have the benefit of an RESP, have taken out the student loan, are in post-secondary education, are staring down this mammoth debt. What's the advice to them? Well, the first thing you need to do is get your head wrapped around the fact that you have to get this debt paid off. If you use the minimum payment that the student loan system gives you, you will be in debt for a decade or more and you will pay twice for your education. So don't do it. I tell people that if you're getting an undergrad degree, you should have it paid off in five years. A master's would take about seven. And if you're going for a PhD or some other big professional designation, then you know it's like a mortgage. It might take you 10 years, it might take you 12. Uh, however, as long as you are in debt as a student, you need to be living like a poor student. Stop thinking that just because you got a job, you can go off and buy everything in sight. And final comment, Gail, when it comes to the RSPs, uh, what about the idea of tax shelters, tax breaks? How does that work? Because I know that's different from the RRSP. There is no tax shelter. Not well, there's no tax break for the contribution, but the funds do grow on a tax-sheltered basis, and the funds are taxed in the hand of the recipient. So if your child has little or no income, they'll pay little or no tax. Regardless, it'll be better taxed in their hands than in yours. Gail Vaz Oxlade, always bringing us the great information, and you have a new book. It is called saving for school oddly enough we always love having you on the show you make it sound simple and really it's something that we all need to be smart about when we attack our debt head on right thanks Gail. my pleasure